This is the new BMW iX. It's BMW's large SUV take on the all-electric i-range, but this time everything is new, from the foundations to the face. And what a face. Now, when BMW says that it's going to launch a technology flagship, you kind of sit up and pay attention. And also, you probably set aside a few hours to learn lots of new ways to do things. But then the car comes out, and you just have to spend some time staring at it. First impressions? Let us know in the comments. This one's probably going to generate some opinions. And please do like and subscribe while you're there because it really does help. At a basic level, the iX is just another five-seat large SUV. But there's a fair bit more going on than that. This is a new car from the ground up, and it doesn't share any parts with the similarly sized X5. There's a really cool carbon fibre frame and lots of lightweight aluminium bits. And actually, BMW reckons this is the most sustainable car it has ever produced, mainly because it's created using nothing but renewable energy sources and lots of recycled bits, which is pretty cool. But that's not all. There is a lot going on here. OK, so this is probably the most controversial bit of the iX, the way it looks. But to be honest, the only thing that really causes controversy is the front, because it looks like a mutant squirrel. And it is not helped by a UK number plate. To be fair, the sensors for things like the adaptive cruise control are actually hidden behind those panels, so it does keep the visual fuss to a minimum. And it is very, very colour sensitive. Oh, and on the subject of colour, the only standard shade is actually fridge spec white. Any other colour is an £800 option. Other than the bonkers nostrils, I actually don't think it looks that bad, as long as you sort of cover that bit up with your hand. It has got some really nice details, though. Very slim LED headlights, frameless doors, and flush door handles. This little BMW i kick in the back here. And then a more conservative but still interesting rear end. These wheels, by the way, are 22 inches, which is massive. I have to say, I do actually think it's a lot better looking in the metal than it is in pictures. It's a lot more stylish and futuristic than I thought. And that's the point, right? Cars with character are what it's all about. Oh, uh, OK, right. When you get in this car, it just makes you go, what the hell? The steering wheel isn't even a steering wheel. It's a hexagon. Since when did hexagons become a thing? But suffice to say, if you want an interior that is as outrageous as the exterior, then the iX has you covered. If you look around, there's kind of a straight edges and diagonals theme, and there's a load of different materials. I mean, look at these seats. I don't know whether they're brilliant or awful. There's like a diagonal stripe, and then it's got kind of a tweedy recycled material up top, and then some sort of suede with contrast stitching, which should be terrible, but I actually quite like it. And then you've got this big centre console. So obviously there's a flat floor because it's got a pure electric drivetrain. And this centre console is absolutely massive. Look, I can get my entire arm in here. And it looks like something off the Starship Enterprise. And then in front of you, you have this massive sort of widescreen TV of a bank of screens. Now this side is a 12.3 inch information display that's right in front of the driver. And then this side is 14.9 inches extra and they're kind of melded together. So you just have this huge projection out in front of you. I mean, it takes up, what, two thirds of the dash? That is a lot of information. It's pretty great in here. It feels a bit like you've been transported to a Milan furniture fair. It all feels quite stylish and it's a nice place to spend time. But the best bit is, there may be absolutely tons of kit and tech, from 3D cameras to advanced driver assistance, but none of it feels overwhelming. BMW has come up with a thing that they call shy tech, which means that all of these technological marvels are supposed to fade into the background until you really need them. And actually, 
I think it really works. The details are what really make it for me. So there's the button set here, but they do different things depending on how long you press them. And if all of the tech feels a little bit overwhelming, then there is also this iDrive controller, which is made of glass, no less. And the top is a touchpad, so you can write little notes to yourself with your actual handwriting. And the things that I appreciate most are the hidden speakers in the headrests. My phone, when I connected my phone to this car, it did it really quickly and really intuitively. I like the fact that when you switch the seat heating on, it doesn't just heat the steering wheel and the seat, it actually heats the armrests here and here, and also heats the dash under there as well. So you become wrapped in a little cocoon of wonderfulness. As ever, if you want to get the full kit list of the BMW iX, then please do log on to electrifying.com. You can click on this little thing up here and it'll give you the full rundown of exactly how cool this car is. The long wheelbase and wide cabin do make the iX look a bit chunky on the outside, but that pays dividends in here because this is really quite spacious. I mean, I'm six foot tall and I've got loads of headroom. Look how much room I've got around me. It's got the usual flat floor that you find in an electric car, which means that you can walk all the way through and out through the doors. And there's loads of little practical touches. Like in the backs of the seats, there are a load of charge points for your phone. This is definitely a car that has been worked out for a multi-device family. There's also a very, very useful boot. It's a good shape. Okay, so it's not quite as big as the Skoda Enyaq or a VW ID4, but it's pretty much all you'd need. Although it is wise to note that there is no front boot or fruit for extra storage, but generally this is nicely practical. There are two battery sizes available for the iX. The basic one, like this iX40, has a 71 kilowatt hour battery that's good for 257 miles of range. That's on the standard tests. Then there's the more powerful iX50, which has an enormous 105.2 kilowatt hour battery that should manage 380 miles. Phew. This car gets 150 kilowatt DC charging, the bigger one 200 kilowatt, which is fine. And that means that the smaller battery iX40 like this one can charge from 10 to 80% in half an hour on a 150 kilowatt charger. And the bigger battery car takes the same time on a 200 kilowatt charger, which is admittedly getting complicated. Suffice to say that the car we've got here should take about 11 and a half hours on a seven kilowatt home charger, which is good, but not exactly groundbreaking. That's a very slight disappointment when some other premium cars are reaching much higher charging speeds, but the iX does at least seem to be very consistent and good enough without blowing my mind. There'll be two flavours of iX at launch. There'll be the iX50, which has 523 brake horsepower, and this, the iX40, that has 326. Eventually, there'll be a car called the i60M, which will be the really, really fast one, and that's gonna have over 600 brake horsepower. It'll be very, very fast, and largely pointless. In the meantime, the iX40 is the baby and it is not too shabby. It does zero to 62 miles an hour in a shade over six seconds. And actually it's quite surprising. The one thing you never quite lose the impression of is that it is a big car. We're on a country road here and this iX feels massive. But you know one thing it isn't, it's not sporty. And that is not a criticism. The ride can be a little bit firm, but generally it's quite soothing. You can pull out of a junction and you're not worried about being too slow. You can accelerate away from the traffic lights and it feels really quite rapid, but it's not like it doesn't break your neck. Look, full throttle, it's quick, but it's not sort of scary. If you go round a corner too fast, it does feel a little bit soft and it feels heavy, which it is. But if you want a sporty electric BMW, then that's why the i4 exists. And that's gonna be here soon. It just seems like everything about this car is set up to make your life that little bit easier. It's got excellent voice control. So even if you can't work out what all the buttons do, you just tell the car what to do and it does it. Take me to London. I found several destinations. Which one shall I select? It's also got a sat nav that if it thinks that the charge is getting too low, it just directs you to the nearest charger. So it's all ultra convenient. You don't have to think too hard. The overriding impression is that everything about this car adds up to a really stress-free drive. So the BMW iX, it is a little bit overwhelming at first. But once you spend some time with it, it's worth getting to know. 
It's actually giving me the same vibes as the BMW i3 when that first came out, because that felt a bit strange as well. But we absolutely love that car now. And I like the iX much more than I thought I would. It's actually a little bit of a star. Please do let us know what you think in the comments. And if you need to know more about the iX or any of its competition, then please do log on to electrifying.com just here, and we'll help you clear the air.